world's, world leaders have recognized, perhaps more than they have for many years, the vital importance of infrastructure investment to raising economic productivity, to supporting economic growth. When your, um, uh, India is looked at, I think, enviously by many countries around the world at the moment when we see your growth figures, but nonetheless, uh, infrastructure investment is vital for improving economic productivity, enabling businesses uh, to succeed. And then when you consider the predictions that are made for the uh, rapid urbanization of the world's population, um, some perhaps 2 billion people more around the world moving into cities in the next 25 to 30 years, uh, the overwhelming majority of that uh, in Asia, uh, then again you see a context which drives even more focus or should drive even more focus on the need to invest in uh, the appropriate infrastructure, uh, infrastructure that is sustainable and which um, can ensure that those new cities or growing cities are places that people can live and work and function uh, in, in, a, in a good way. And, and certainly, uh, I was in Mumbai yesterday spending time in, in, in Delhi today. The focus on urban development and urban infrastructure in India is particularly um, uh, particularly apparent uh, uh, through that. Um, the AIB was, was uh, formed uh, initially as a consequence of an initiative taken by the Chinese government. Uh, Chinese president uh, first proposed the formation of the AIB uh, in, in 2013. Uh, in the end, it was formed with the support of 57 founding members. Uh, India is a very uh, important member uh, of the bank, the second largest uh, shareholder in the bank, um, but also a, a country which has a very strong voice both in the negotiations that led to the creation of the AIB, but also now uh, in the uh, discussions we have uh, around the boardroom table. We have I India is represented by a, a director there. Um, my vice presidential colleague, our chief investment officer, is an Indian national, Mr. DJ Pandian, Dr. DJ Pandian, I should say, um, uh, who was uh, formerly uh, a leading figure in the state of, of, of Gujarat. And so uh, he is uh, primarily responsible for developing the pipeline of projects, for identifying the particular projects that we would, uh, we would, we would get involved in. As I said, the bank has 57 uh, founding members. Those founding members have, uh, between them, uh, pledged $100 billion of capital for the bank. Um, of that, uh, $20 billion is, is paid in, and the remainder uh, is, uh, is so-called callable capital, uh, very similar to the structure of other uh, international financial institutions. Uh, the bank has been set up to operate uh, according to the very highest standards of, uh, of, of governance. Um, we are, if you like, uh, uh, very much part of the family of multilateral development banks. There are you know, a lot of similarities, of course, between the way our institution is structured and other institutions like the World Bank or the Asian uh, Development Bank. But our president, uh, Jin Li Chun, uh, likes to say that uh, we may uh, share the same DNA as other multilateral development banks, but perhaps we can also be the next stage in evolution uh, of, the, of, the, of the model. Um, and I maybe say some, some words about how we are, we are thinking about that. Um, we have set out uh, operating principles we want to be lean, clean, and green. Sometimes it was mistranslated as lean, clean, and mean. Um, <laughs> but lean, clean, and, clean, and green is, is what we mean. And all of those three are very uh, uh, important. Obviously, lean, keeping our costs down, not becoming a very uh, bureaucratic, top-heavy, expensive uh, organization to run, but instead having a relatively small but highly expert team of staff in our headquarters uh, in, in Beijing and working very much with with consultants, with national organizations, and so on, to develop the projects that we are, uh, that we are funding. Uh, clean also very important. Um, uh, uh, zero tolerance for corruption or, or, or any of those sorts of things uh, within our institution or in the projects that we fund, as you would expect from an international uh, institution. Uh, and green, of course, also sustainability very much at the core of the, uh, of the role and the, and the purpose and the operations uh, of, of, of the bank, and especially given the time in which we're operating. That's important not just for the institution, but also for the, 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 the projects uh, that, we, that we get involved in. Having said all of that, it's also important to, to say to you that we are still very much in the startup phase of the creation of the, of the AIB. We still have a very small staff. Uh, we still uh, are 
in many ways, uh, developing our thinking about our strategy, about the areas that we should, uh, should focus on. Um, and that, that, that growth and development phase will last for the first, you know, the first few years of the bank's, uh, uh, the bank's operation. Um, and our founding members, of course, have strong views about how we should develop, and we're keen to interact with industry to identify, you know, what are your priorities for the sort of institution that we should be? It's a rare opportunity to build a new uh, I international financial institution of this sort. But nor have, we been, um, nor have we been allowing the grass to grow under our feet, if you like. We have off to a, to a, to a quick start. Um, we have already, uh, our board of directors have already agreed our first... Uh, six loans to projects, um, and uh, we will consider more at our board meeting in 10 days' time. Um, we have already agreed projects in, uh, in, in, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in Myanmar, uh, in, in Indonesia, and in Tajikistan, and those projects spread across different uh, sectors, uh, uh, the energy sector, uh, with um, projects both um, in uh, power transmission in Bangladesh, uh, with um, renewable energy in, 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 in Pakistan, with a gas-fired power station in uh, Myanmar, also road projects uh, in Tajikistan and, and Pakistan, and then a substantial uh, uh, urban redevelopment, slum upgrading program that we've become involved in in, in Indonesia. Uh, we also have a substantial pipeline of, of projects that we are uh, we are considering. We're obviously a project finance institution. I'll say a bit more about how that works in a moment. And to, to reassure you, as you've heard the list of countries that I've mentioned, uh, many projects in India already have come forward to the bank for, for consideration. And you know, we would anticipate during the course of next year that we would um, be agreeing our, our first loans in this country. And you know, India, as a very large member of the bank, I suspect will be uh, one of, if not the largest country of operations once the bank reaches uh, the mature um, the mature uh, uh, state uh, in, 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 the coming, in the coming years. We have, uh, I'll, talk, I'll talk later about our strategy, but just in terms of how we work, obviously a project finance institution, we're looking for bankable projects. Um, we, we don't have uh, concessional, I don't have a concessional window, we're not a, an aid agency, we're a, a, an institution which is looking to make a, a return, albeit a modest one on, on, the, on the projects that we are uh, uh, involved in. Um, for government-backed projects, so-called sovereign-backed projects, we uh, operate on a collective basis and so uh, our interest rates are, for those projects, quite low, similar to that which the World Bank or the ADB would provide. But just as importantly, uh, we can and are keen to consider projects that are private sector, that are sponsored by private sector institutions, that are non-sovereign projects, if you like where, of course, we would need to assess the project, look at the risks, uh, and so on. Um, uh, the Myanmar project was our first private sector loan, but we're looking to develop uh, uh, rapidly uh, a greater share of our, of our business uh, in projects that are led by, uh, by private sector institutions, uh, uh, with com companies from anywhere in the world able to, uh, to pitch for the, for the, for the, for the business. Um, uh, that's, an, that's an important tenet for, I think, many, many international financial institutions. Uh, we have uh, an environmental and social framework which looks at the uh, environmental standards and the social standards of, of projects, which is uh, similar to that which the Asian Development Bank or the World Bank have in place. Um, and that's important to us because it also enables the AIB to engage in co-financing with other international financial institutions. So of those first projects I mentioned, we have projects which are co-financed with the World Bank, with the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, and with the Asian Development Bank, as well as standalone projects that the AIB has generated uh, uh, for itself. And that co-financing, especially in the early stage of our bank's development, is also very useful um, for, uh, for helping us to develop our own uh, capacity uh, and expertise. And so each project has to be assessed against those policies um, and, and in, so that we can ensure that the projects we're involved in are economically beneficial, but also environmentally sustainable and socially uh, acceptable. Um, but I think it's also worth saying that it, it doesn't need to be the case that uh, assessing projects should take a very long time. I think that one of the, one of the areas that um, uh, we want to 
develop our work in is to ensure that we can be responsive, that we can take decisions relatively quickly, that we can, of course, maintain the standards and ensure that the projects are, 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 are high quality, but we also see a role for our institution uh, in being responsive to the needs and, uh, and, and demands uh, of, our, of our clients. Um, now, the AIB is a, an infrastructure bank. We have a saying in the UK, it does what it says on the tin, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, um, uh, and you, you will have seen already from the projects that I've, that I've mentioned. But uh, as you will know, infrastructure is a term which can cover a multitude of sins. Um, and so uh, we are also developing our own strategy to uh, work out what are the areas of priority, what are the, the lines of business, if you like, on which we want to uh, to, to, to focus? What are, where, where do we think the AIB could make a particular uh, impact? And there are three particular areas of focus that we are developing. Um, the first is on sustainable infrastructure. So I mentioned that the, our member countries, the countries of the world, have come together recently and agreed the sustainable development goals, have agreed in Paris uh, objectives for uh, tackling climate change, and those have major infrastructure uh, needs in terms of energy, um, sustainable cities, transportation, and we see a particular role for our bank in, 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 in that space. Uh, we're already working, and you may have seen, and if you haven't, uh, you'd be very welcome to get involved in commenting at the next stage, but we're already working on an energy strategy for the bank to focus our work in the energy, in the energy space. The next round of discussions on that will come uh, early in the new year, and we welcome uh, views submitted from the private sector to help us develop uh, that in the, in the right way. Maybe as there is a role for Fiki in, in becoming involved in that, in that process. Um, sustainable cities, likewise, we see a uh, big potential for our, for our bank in, in that space. So the second area of priority, perhaps the one that would be least surprising, uh, connectivity. There is a uh, strong need if we're to make the labor product and capital markets in Asia work better to build transport connectivity, energy connectivity between countries in our, in our region. And cross-border projects can sometimes be harder to get away than projects in one, in one country. And so a multilateral institution can play a useful role uh, uh, in, in, in that respect. And then lastly, but perhaps most importantly, uh, both for this group and for the region, um, there is much discussion about how can we uh, mobilize more private sector capital to get involved in, in infrastructure investment. Um, the, there are many uh, academic assessments of the scale of the infrastructure funding gap. and. Uh, the numbers vary, but they're all in the many trillions of dollars. Um, and the gap between the need and the available resources, even from uh, sovereign governments, from international financial institutions, is huge. And the only way to bridge that gap is to mobilize much more private sector, uh, private sector capital. Um, as I said, the bank is interested in supporting private sector projects, in working out how we can play a role to crowd in more private sector uh, capital to the projects that we are involved in. And we'll have programs of work in the coming year to really uh, get into the detail of what particular role the AIB could play. So we don't have fixed ideas about the difference that our bank could make in, in that space, but we do see that there is a major uh, need uh, in that area. area. The, there is clearly a lot of overlap between what's going on in India um, and the, 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 the different priorities I was outlining. And, you know, already we're having a lot of discussions about particular projects, particularly urban projects, energy projects, um, uh, for example, urban mass transit projects in, 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 in India. So, um, and, and, you know, as time goes on and we build our capacity, we'll be able to engage in many more of those, uh, and many more of those areas. And you're right that the, the India, Myanmar, Thailand connectivity is one example of the kind of um, uh, uh, regional collaboration which um, uh, the AIB could, could get involved in. There's a lot of collaboration, for example, in the greater Mekong sub-region again. Um, and so uh, we're engaging with those uh, dialogues as well. You know, we, we, we don't want to um, uh, force ourselves into things that are already going very well um, or to crowd out existing funding or private sector funding. We want to bring additional resources to bear that help to make more 
uh, projects happen, but um, in, in those cases, you know, there, there are many um, potential lines of business that flow from, from, that, uh, from that collaboration. Um, you quite rightly mentioned um, the, the question of preparation of, of projects and the resources that go into preparation. I, sh I should also have mentioned that um, whilst the, uh, the ordinary resources of the bank, the lending and so on, is provided on a commercial basis, um, we have also established a special fund for project preparation. And uh, the purpose of the special fund uh, is to provide resources <clears throat> to help project sponsors, particularly in the least developed countries, uh, to bring their projects up to a standard of preparation that makes them suitable for consideration for funding uh, from uh, an institution like ours. Uh, we already have um, $50 million committed from the Chinese government, and the UK government has also committed uh, to provide $50 million for that special fund, and we would hope that other members of the bank in due course will, will contribute there, because obviously, to be successful, we also need to have a very good flow of new projects coming forward, and so uh, we can help uh, we, through, through that uh, route to, uh, to, to prepare good uh, projects. In respect of the procurement guidelines, um, those are all very transparently published on our website. We have a procurement policy. We also have uh, procurement instructions for recipients, which is a much more detailed set of guidelines about how we would seek to uh, apply those policies. Um, I'm told they don't have anywhere near as many pages as some other equivalent guidelines, but still they are very comprehensive, and I think, and you can download that from our website. So rather than me going through all of that, I should say that um, you know, we, we are... We're, we're, we're a very transparent organization. We're trying to be very transparent both in the information that we provide and, 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 and in the way we work. And so uh, all of the policies that I've mentioned, all of the requirements that I've mentioned are disclosed on our website. You can find them there very easy, easily, AIIB.org. Um, and likewise, when there are business opportunities that are coming up, um, either directly with the bank or um, particular uh, project-related opportunities, those are also published on our website. Um, and so, uh, for example, we've recently, um, I think it's still going on, we have a tender for consultants to help us develop uh, our, our work with private sector projects, and um, we've had a lot of interest from around the world in that. We're currently also uh, seeking uh, expressions of interest from asset managers who want to work with the bank. And so. Um, you, you can you can see on on the website a, a lot of the things that we're doing, and um, you know we welcome uh, very much interest from from Indian businesses in any of those um, in any of those, those those pieces of work. So perhaps rather than going into detail, you can feel free to uh, to download them. There are also um, email contact addresses, so that if there's any when, when you read through those documents, if there's anything you see that causes you concern or that you want to ask questions about, then you can follow up with. Uh, with, with my with my uh, with my colleagues, um, uh, we're very interested in working on PPP projects. Um, I, I, we haven't particularly developed any um, uh, any kind of guidelines or uh, uh, areas where we think we can make a difference. So we're we're looking at PPP projects, but I think very much on a case by case, project by project basis, where we see uh, a role for the AIB. And as I said, we can be very flexible in how we in, in how we uh, fit in. We are n we are n not planning to have a, um, a, a an approach based on country strategies or on allocations country by country for the resources that we will deploy. Instead, we will be very driven by the quality of the projects that come forward to us. Um, uh, so, in terms of our planned exposure to to India, obviously that would need to sit within the overall risk framework that we have, which, which um, seeks to ensure that our exposures are, are diversified. Um, but we haven't set a kind of target for this is how much business we want to do in India. Uh, this is what we expect our exposure uh, uh, to be. Um, so there, in other words, there is a lot of potential to develop our business in, in India. We're not, we're not hemmed in by requirements to say we must have a certain amount of money deployed in, in, each, uh, in, each, in each country. Um, the bank is still going through the credit rating process, and so that will be something which becomes apparent at a, at a, uh, uh, at a, at a, at a later date. Uh, 
for an institution like the AIB, being a financially strong institution is incredibly important because that is what enables us to continue to do our work. And um, uh, you are all also uh, Indian taxpayers, at least I assume that you are, and, um, uh, and therefore you would also expect us to uh, treat with a, a great deal of seriousness the Indian taxpayers' money that has been contributed as paid in capital to our bank. And um, so, uh, number one, it is very important for us to have the mindset that we have to be and continue to be a financially strong institution. That's a duty we owe to our to the member countries who have come together to pay in to pay in money uh, uh, to the bank. But the bank has been set up with a development perspective. You know, if you read the uh, the articles of, of association which were put together by our members, they are clear that the purpose of the bank is to support the sustainable economic development of the economy of Asia through infrastructure investment, and secondarily to promote cooperation in the region to achieve that objective. And so, and that is a, that is a development objective. That is, uh, uh, and so, um, whereas a, a, a bank might fund, a commercial bank might fund any project just because it would be commercially viable and would get its money back, um, you know, we need to be sure that the way we are deploying our money is consistent with that overall objective that we've been set, which means that everything we do must have a demonstrable development objective. The AIB is an international, multilateral institution. It's not a Chinese institution. Uh, the idea was put forward by China, and China plays a very important um, role as the proposer of the, of the institution and as the host country. But India also plays a very important role in the bank, as do all of our members, and we are answerable to all 57 members. Uh, one Belt, One Road is the policy of one of our members. It's not the policy of the bank. And uh, we will invest in projects that may have some overlap with that policy. We'll also in invest in many projects that have no relation to it, to, to it whatsoever. And every single project that we invest in will still have to meet the tests that, that I was describing in terms of uh, policy compliance, uh, development of objectives, um, being openly procured, and all those sorts of things. Um, uh, as far as I'm aware, we're not an investor uh, so far in any projects in the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. We have invested in two projects in, in Pakistan so far. Uh, one is um, the completion of a stretch of the M4 motorway. Um, uh, I can't remember. Between Shawcott and Kanawal, I think. Uh, ah, apologies for my pronunciation. Um, uh, uh, which is a project that we have uh, co-financed with the Asian Development Bank and the United Kingdom's Department for International Development. And uh, we have uh, invested in a project which is, um, uh, the, uh, which is a, a renewable energy project which is to add capacity to an existing hydroelectric power scheme, uh, also in, in, in Pakistan, and also co-financed with another uh, uh, international institution. And so... Um, uh, I, I think that probably shows you, as well as anything else that I've said, that you know we are an institution that is driven by the project, not by politics, um, that, that, that looks at uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the qualities of each of the, of each of the ideas that come to us. Any member of the bank, and indeed any private sector institution, can bring projects to us uh, to consider, and we'll look at them all equally and on the same terms. So. Perhaps with that, I will wrap up my remarks. Um, I hope that gives you a sense of where we're coming from, what we're trying to achieve, the, the early strategy that we are developing. Um, but we also come here uh, very humbly as a new institution that is in the very early stages of its development, building our capacity, with a wish to listen and to engage with you uh, to find out uh, what you would find uh, most useful from an in institution like ours. So, um, uh, uh, Mr. S uh, Dr. Singh, if, uh, Mr. Ramchand, if I could wrap up my remarks there, and I look forward very much to the discussion that we will have. Thank you. Thank you.